Hey there, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today we have a JVC model AL-F3. This is a fully automatic P-mount uh, direct drive turntable from JVC. Um, this one's just come in for basic service. It probably has not been looked at since it was manufactured sometime in the mid-1980s. Um, I've already plugged it in and I just thought we'd go over some of the features of this deck. It's uh, um, completely automatic and it's got tons of features on it. Um, this was a pretty nice deck. It's got some decent weight to it. Uh, the tone arm is uh, aluminum. Uh, it's got the P-mount, uh, like I mentioned, and uh, it's got a non-adjustable counterweight because the P-mount system is factory set to about 1.25 grams. Uh, it does have adjustable uh, anti-skating, and it's got adjustable um, uh, the auto start and auto return points. And um, like I mentioned, it is fully automatic. Um, speed uh, 3345 does have pitch control. It's got a strobe light with the markings on here, so you can set your speed. Um, for automatic start, it's got 30 centimeter and 17 centimeter uh, records. Uh, it's got a repeat mode, but it's uh, either on all the time or off, so there's no adjustable like one, two, three, four, five, six like techniques. And uh, queuing, uh, all accessible outside the dust cover if you're one of those people who plays the records with the dust cover down, which you probably shouldn't do. Um, so let's just have a look. Oh yeah, it's got a start stop switch as well. So I've already plugged it in. I'm not going to throw a record on here. I'm just, I'll grab the tone arm. Just want to make sure that it's actually functioning. So the arm's lifting. It's coming over to the correct spot. And it's dropping and we'll just grab it before it drops. And we'll just check the auto return here. Auto returning nice and smooth. That's great. Let's just check to see how the uh, 17 centimeter, the the uh, 7 inch or, or uh, 45 record, the small ones, how the auto start is on that. Well, that looks good as well. So this uh, turntable looks like it's functioning nicely. Having a look at the uh, speed pot over here, it looks like it needs a little bit of cleaning. Because when I move it to the right, it's getting a little bit of the jump action, but it's not horrible by any means. So we'll give we'll give that a cleaning. Okay. I do have the dust cover for it. It's uh, in pretty decent shape all, all around. It's got, you know, usual scratches on it. I'll unplug it. Uh, this one's uh, one of those turntables that uh, does not have a ground connection. It's uh, internally grounded. So you don't need a, a ground lug on your amplifier for this one. All right, so what we're going to do here is we are going to service the motor. And we'll service the speed pots. And other than that, not a whole lot to do. Can't uh, change a belt, obviously, because it is a direct drive. Uh, we'll clean styles and stuff like that, uh, but uh, pretty relatively easy deck to work on. Um, it kind of reminds me of you know, Techniques' later direct drive decks, this kind of style. Um, they almost look identical in a way, but uh, I'm pretty sure JVC, um, even though technically, um, Oh, that was the 45 adapter. Technically, uh, JVC was owned by Matsushita back in the day, right? So maybe their, their decks did have something to do with the Techniques decks, right? So, well, they definitely look similar. Now, this one's got an oddball arrangement on the feet. This one's over here. I wonder what's hiding back here. Maybe the tone arm wires. Um, there is the uh, ground. So they've just grounded the chassis there. So anyway, let's... Uh, Let's open this sucker up and see what we got. All right, let's see what's underneath. Okay, so this is obviously our auto return mechanism here. Um, 
and it looks like to get at the motor we're probably going to have to lift this entire plate which should be not a lot of fun i'm going to get rid of this stupid 45 adapter it's going to drive me nuts here's our speed pot why don't we do that right now see how you guys are seeing that speed pot is right here okay we're just going to give that a shot of neutral And work it back and forth. This is our speed switch. Better clean that as well. Just a really simple switch so it's a couple holes here for access so just give them a little shot of cleaner work that back and forth Okay, all right, so now this should be interesting. To be honest with you, I don't really look forward to lifting this up, but to get the motor, we're gonna have to do that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five screws. This is a ground. These two have built-in washers, and these two are just standard machine screws, looks like. Ooh, they're long. So we got, I'm gonna just put these on my desk here so I don't forget where they go. Put them in order that I remove them. So, two long ones there, and then a short one, another short one, and this one has a ground plug. Okay. And before we lift this, we're just going to have a peek around to make sure nothing's going to go flying or breaking. Okay, pretty simple stuff. So you just want to lift this up. And I guess we can just kind of set it aside. There's a cable here, and that is the, uh, right here, that's the trip switch. Obviously, as soon as the arm moves, it turns on that switch, turns on the motor. And you can see these wires coming back to the motor here and the motor board. Here is our motor and our motor board and it's held down with a few screws as well we're going to need to turn it around to get at the actual motor so we got four screws here hmm. different lengths again that one's there that one's there that one was there. And the short one there. So one long one and three shorter ones. Made in Japan. There you go. There's your JVC motor. Very small, eh? It's spinning pretty nice, I have to say, for never having been serviced. But this one might not come out. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well. I think we've got a situation here where we're not going to be able to service this motor. Um, so here's our spindle. Here's our motor, motor board, okay? We've got a tooth gear here, which activates the auto return. 
we've got a an eclip here. But normally you'd be able to remove this. But if you have a look, this is riveted. So unless you want to drill these out, you're not going to be doing anything with this. The only way to remove this would be to drill out these rivets, remove this plastic cap, remove this E-clip, and then pry that black gear down to pull the motor out. But we're prevented from doing that because of those rivets. So, and I just noticed that I ripped out the cable here. So we just, uh, we just can't do anything. Let me have a quick look at the service manual, see if there's anything on this. And if there is, I'll come back and let you know. But uh, if not, we're just going to, we'll button it back up. Um, I noticed that there is a little bit of grease where the uh, bottom of the bearing sits um, on, the, on the cap there. So maybe we can clean that out and apply some fresh grease there. But other than that, um, it is spinning okay. I don't see any issues with it, but there's absolutely no place where we can lubricate this motor. So... Anyway, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I checked online. There's really nothing that talks about the lubrication of the motor, but uh, the drawing for this uh, for this motor showed that uh, this it didn't show screws for these parts. So the rivets are obviously what belong there, and unfortunately, we're going to have to uh, to live with it that way. Well, that's that. in the wrong hole. Definitely. The uh, plinth is all plastic. Okay, well, that was a bit of a waste. All right, I need to put this back. Uh, if you did have a, an arm that was dropping very quickly, it's uh, very easy to service the uh, pop-up mechanism and uh, apply some new, fresh uh, silicone grease there. Uh, here's an auto-return sponge here, and it looks to be in okay shape. So if you're having issues with auto-return, you're probably going to want to remove and replace this little piece of sponge here. But this one looked like it was working fine, so we're not going to touch that. Okay, so we just need to line this up as to where it was. Make sure it was somewhere around here. screws here and here there and there and there and there okay that seems right I'm just gonna move the arm to make sure it's not jammed or anything and it looks like it is okay now we're okay always check that when you put something back we haven't tied up the arm somehow. So we're okay now. We're moving the arm back and forth. Let 
One more time. Arm is moving, which is good. All right, let's bolt this back down. Well, this is not going to be a very exciting video. I thought, you know, I haven't done a JVC in a while. That would make an interesting video. Not. But then again, like I said, uh, my goal here is to try to document as many different brands and models of turntables that come in. And uh, this is one of them. Okay, this cable back. So we have, oh, this is interesting before I say that um this hole here would be for a belt drive jvc turntable so you can see where the motor would sit um and uh so you have a, a little dc motor here with a, probably a different mo uh, motor board but it would be right here for a belt drive unit so that's kind of interesting hmm. okay all right worlds oh you know what i forgot to do eh I forgot to put this ground back. I'm probably screaming at the at the TV or the at the computer. You forgot the ground cable. You forgot the ground cable. Got it. All right. All right. World's most boring turntable. And that isn't a bad thing, you know. Sometimes uh, boring is simple and simple is reliable and in this case you know this deck <laughs> it'll probably spin for another 30 years i mean considering you know that it's had no service and everything felt really damn good on it it's like it was a, a well-manufactured piece so you want to get your feet back in this oddball one over here These are really big and long, and the screws are very short. Okay, I'm going to finish buttoning, buttoning this thing up. And then we'll turn it over and give it a sound test. Okay, it's back on its feet. Platter is a ringy kind of aluminum affair here, nothing special. But, and even that platter mat is really thin. Um, once you get that on there, it deadens it down. I mean, you can buy yourself. I just got this. I ordered this a couple of weeks ago. It's just a felt. Matt, I just got it off of eBay. Haven't even opened it yet. Came in from, uh, I think it was Hong Kong. I think it was only like 10 bucks. It's not bad. It's not great. Um, you, know, you could replace it. Oh, the hole's way too big. And we expect for ten bucks. Um, might maybe give you a better performance. It's a little bit thicker. I'm not a huge believer in mats. I know some people swear by them, cork mats and all this stuff. You know, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a stickler for a good quality rubber mat. I don't have a problem with that. Anyway, so I thought you want to see that product. If you're looking for a new felt mat for your rig or something. All right, hooking up this turntable is super easy. Because you've only got a right and a left audio cord on it. And power. 
And let's make sure everything's spinning correctly. How our speed's doing here. We're on uh, 45 still. We're just going to check our speed. Oh, yes, that's better. It's definitely holding better now. 45. Oh, great. Yeah, speed's really good. And it switches very quickly as well. Let's just stop that, put it on fully automatic 30 centimeter. Okay, let's try the automatic features here. I've already set the anti-skating at 1.25. Let's drop it in the right position. Good sound, good stereo separation. Cueing works nicely. One's very quiet. Let's check her out of return. There you go. Working nicely. Kind of springy sounding over here with the auto return mechanism. But uh, functions great. Um, looks like a really reliable, solid deck. Kind of like, like, almost like a uh, Techniques SLD 20, I would say, or 200 in that series, except with the, you know, with the P-mount, obviously. Um, you know, it's very, very similar to that. Um, but that's it. I mean, I'm sorry. This one was extremely boring. There's just not a hell of a whole lot what you can do with this one other than uh, clean the controls here and, and make sure they're working good because the motor is pretty much uh, a factory sealed affair. So if you have one of these things, hopefully the grease or the oil or whatever's in that motor hasn't dried out. Otherwise, you're going to have to drill out those rivets to remove it. And it's, it's going to be a bit of a job, which I'm definitely not going to do. I, I don't want to damage this. So um that's it thanks for tuning in that's the boring jvc l a l f3 uh but what looks like a, to be a very reliable and uh long lasting deck we'll catch you in the next one bye